Hey guys, it is April from Getting Hooko With It. Today I am here to do my May wrap up. This is coming to you really late and I apologize for that. I was really busy with the Sweet Summer Read series, which I hope you guys liked. Uh, but let's get into the stuff that I read in May. that I read in May was Lilac Girls. Now I read this with Krista from Books and Jams. She has a book club group on Goodreads, uh, which is really great. If you want to join, I'll leave a link in the description box below. Uh, so we read Lilac Girls. Now this is a World War II novel and it follows three women. So one of them lives in America, one of them lives in a concentration camp, and then one of them is a German doctor uh, who performs various experiments on the patients at the concentration camp. Um, I really enjoyed this book. I gave it four stars. I was really, really happy with it. I thought that it was interesting that about halfway through the book the war ends and you continue on with the story of these women and what happened to them after the war and I find that really rare to find um, in World War II books. They usually kind of end with the ending of the war and obviously there are huge ramifications for what war does to a society so it was really interesting to dive in and continue along with their storyline so I really liked it if you're looking for a World War II read I really recommend that one next I read Ballet Beautiful like I don't know what's going on with me but I'm on a little bit of a ballet kick right now I gave this four stars. I thought this was a really well written book. Um, it follows her story as a ballerina. She opens up about getting injured and having to scale back and how she trained her body to become ballet ready again. And in the book there's also a program that you can follow and it's the same program that she used to get her body back in shape. So I really enjoyed it. Next I read A Closed and Common Orbit. Now this is the sequel to A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, which I adored. That one follows a cast of quirky characters and the same happens in the sequel. Um, I don't want to say who it follows because I feel like I could give stuff away if you haven't read A Long Way, uh, but let me just say I was just as enamored by the characters in this book as I was in a long way. There is something about the writing and the characters that just pulls me in. This one I also gave four stars. I loved it. One of the things that I really love about Becky Chambers' world that she's created here is that you not only follow the AIs and not only are they central characters but they're central characters and they move the plot along in these stories just as much as any of the aliens or any of the people do. I really love that aspect of it and I just think I'm gonna have to read everything that Becky Chambers writes because I love her. Next, oh, I feel really guilty. Um, I read Behind the Beautiful Forevers and I only gave this two stars. I honestly do feel badly because I know that this was good writing. I realize that a lot of people love this book um, and I think it's an important book. But I found it so unbelievably depressing. It was like there was never going to be a silver lining ever in this book and it's not like I need my books to be sugar-coated. It's not like I can't sit in discomfort. It's the fact that this book only provided discomfort and maybe that was the point of it but I just found it a little too overwhelming for me. I also couldn't connect with any of the characters um, so if I had at least been able to connect with the character and sit with them in their discomfort I feel like I could have enjoyed it a bit more, but sadly I only gave it two stars. But then I read 
like one of my favorite books of all time now called Lily and the Octopus. I gave this five stars, obviously. Now Katie over at Girl About Library recommended this to me when I did my what should I read next tag. If you haven't watched that tag, I'll, I'll link it below. Um, so she recommended Lily and the Octopus for me and I'm so grateful that she did because I fell in love. So this follows Ted who is a man in his 40s. He is uh, single and he has a little dachshund named Lily. Now, one day he sees a formation on Lily's head that looks like it's in the form of an octopus and he calls it the octopus throughout the whole book. But you and I and everyone else knows that it's cancer. It is hilarious and heartbreaking. I was literally laughing out loud um, throughout most of the book. I was laughing a lot and I also just sobbed. I was reading this outside on my front porch um, with just like a bunch of Kleenexes and I think I had to go inside I think three times to get more Kleenex because it was so sad at parts but honestly beautiful writing. I loved the use of capitalization in this book. I will never look at capitalization the same way ever again. Uh, I just loved it. I can't wait to read more by this author. Finally, I read Ballerina Body by Misty Copeland. I only gave this three stars and I think it was because I had really enjoyed Ballet Beautiful. So this I felt was kind of a cookie cutter book. I enjoyed hearing Misty Copeland's struggles and how she got on top in the ballet world, which is very competitive, of course. Um, I enjoyed that aspect of it, but it also included like food suggestions and also an exercise routine. I thought the exercise routine just wasn't in the same league at all as the Ballet Beautiful routine. So I, I only gave it three stars. It's not bad, it's really good advice. I think this would be something um, important for young girls who are looking to get into ballet. I think this would be a great book for them to read, for sure. It just didn't blow my mind. Those are all of the books that I read in May. Um, did you guys have any books in May that you were just blown away by? Like Lily and the Octopus for me just blew me out of the water. I loved it so much. Did you guys have a book like that? I'd love to hear. Just leave it in the comments below and I will see you next time. Bye!